Hello friends and welcome to Top of the Stack MTG. Today we have a deck tech for you and for the first time since I've been playing we are actually able to do cat tribal in standard. So this is Almond Cat Cats. <laughs> um, we're going to start off with the actual creatures, the actual cats. There are 16 cats that are currently legal in standard. There would have been 17, except one of them got banned, of course. I want to start off with two honorable mentions because I, I need to talk about where they come from. Graceful Cat. Graceful Cat is from Almond Ket, but the only place to get the actual card is from the Gideon Planeswalker deck. It's one of the five cards that comes in that Planeswalker deck. But it is legal in standard, so I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of its existence. We didn't put it in the deck. They, they purposely try to make those cards not the most viable cards to use. And I think they did a good job with this cat um, in that regard. It, it's not, it, it didn't, it just couldn't quite make the cut uh, because there are a lot of good cats. Um, the second one is Stalking Tiger. Stalking Tiger is from the 2017 core set or starter set. I'm not sure what to call it. Um, these cards are only available, I think, in the Deck Builder's Toolkit. There's 30 cards. They are all legal in standard. I think the Deck Builder Toolkit would give you one of each. <coughs> so if you wanted four of each, you'd have to buy four of those. Or, of course, you can buy singles. And I believe you'd be able to get a hold of them. Stores do have little starter decks that they give out for free for people who are learning how to play magic and they do come in those but only the specific colors so that is not a reasonable way to try to get those cards not to mention the fact you're probably not teaching that many new people to play magic and if you are they should keep their cards so um, try to buy the singles for these if you feel like you want to use them or if you want to have a collection that includes everything that's playable in standard uh, and in modern and uh, other formats, hopefully. <laughs> Frontier. Um, good, so I wanted to mention those two cats because you cannot get them anywhere except the Deck Builders Toolkit and the uh, Planeswalker Starter Decks. So, on to the actual deck. All right, we have, I'd like to give these in order of mana cost. So, Sacred Cat, it's a one drop, life link, and embalm. The reason it's here, of course, is because of the embalm, also because of the life link, which is gonna become important in a minute. When I first started building this deck and I was looking through the cats, I was very worried that this deck would not be in any way competitive because the cats are not the most powerful of creatures. But there's a couple other win conditions that I was able to work into this thing, which I think are incredibly fun to use. This, this deck is a blast to play. It's not tier one. It's not going to be the most popular thing in the world but it really is fun to play. Okay, our second cat is the Prowling Serpipod. This is excellent. Prowling Serpipod um, can't be countered. Creature spells you control can't be countered. So that's really nice, especially if you're going up against a uh, blue control deck, then they won't just counter you the minute you try to play your creatures. You'll be able to still bust through that blue counter attack um, and then of course regal caracal this is the card that really made a cat deck possible 
Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. So now all your cats have lifelink. I really hope this deck is just making your life total go up and up and up. Um, also, when it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. So, awesome. You get a bunch of cats. We've also got in here Long Tusk Cub. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may uh, you get two energy. Pay two energy, put a plus one, plus one counter on Long Tusk Cub. This card doesn't sound like the most powerful thing in the world, but it has proven itself time and time again throughout Standard. It gets played a lot. It's probably, probably the best cat of the bunch, so um, it's got to be in here. It's excellent. And then last but not least is Feldegar Sovereign. This is one of the two win conditions that I was talking about. One of the two added win conditions rather than just attacking your way through. This card has Vigilance and Lifelink, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. When I saw this, I realized this deck would be more than just cats attacking. Um, it, it's going to have this gain life side of it as well, and that opened up a whole bunch of possibilities for, for deck building. Good, so those are the creatures. Hopefully you can hit 40 life and you can win that way, or you can just keep attacking with cats. We also have a Johnny Unyielding. This is a Planeswalker, of course, a Johnny. Um, plus two, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Great way to uh, gain some card advantage. Very nice. Minus two. Exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. So this is nice removal. Of course you want to have removal in your deck. Um, so it's a great way to get rid of other people's creatures. But I also really love that you can do it to yourself. You can exile one of your own creatures and gain life equal to that creature's power. Just another way to try to get up to that 40. Very nice. And then minus 9. Put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature you control and 5 loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. So it won't get you 5 loyalty counters on a Johnny. He is the only... Planeswalker that we're running. Generally, you're not going to get that ultimate. People, of course, can attack your Planeswalkers. They're going to knock down your loyalty counters. So the chance of getting that is very, very slim. But if you happen to, you're going to get plus, plus five, plus five to each of your creatures, which you could win the game just with that, just swinging in with that, especially with the life gain you would get, because they uh, they hopefully all have life link. Um, but this is an excellent planeswalker, and of course he's in the deck because he's half cat, half humanoid. <laughs> um, then we get into the life gain stuff. Okay, these are. Sorry, there's a cat playing right there, and they keep bumping the lighting instrument, but it's okay, because they're cats. It's the cat video. Um, so, this is life gain mostly. First up, Chaplain's Blessing. You gain five life. It's a one drop. It's excellent for this. For this type of a win condition, it's going to be great. Second one up is Renewed Faith. This is a three drop. You gain six life, and you can cycle it if you need to, if you're getting in trouble and you need more cards. You can do that. You do still gain two life when you cycle, but the six life is awesome. Then we've got Pulse of Marasa. Return target creature or land card from a graveyard to its owner's hand. You gain six life. So that's really cool. You can grab a cat back and get the six life. The reason it's in there is for the six life, but... You can get the cat back. 
Now this is the second win condition that I was able to kind of eke into this thing because of the life gain situation, and that is approach of the second sun. <laughs> I know this is kind of crazy and silly. The reason it's in here is because when you play it the first time, you gain seven life, which is great. We're looking to gain life. But also, if you happen to cast it twice, you win the game. So, hey, that's excellent. We're only running three of those. I wasn't going over the numbers of these others. I'll put them up on the screen for you. But that's our 36. And then for the mana base, we are running four Canopy Vistas, just for mana fixing, of course. And I appreciate Canopy Vista um, because it may not come in tapped. It is possible that you'll have two or more basic lands and you'll be able to um, not have it come in tapped. But also, this says Forest or Plain on the Canopy Vista. So these cards aren't just a generic land. They are a forest or a plain. And that's important because our second mana fixing land is Fortified Village. As Fortified Village enters the battlefield, you may reveal a forest or a plain card from your hand. If you don't, it comes in tapped. So you can show a canopy vista to ensure that a fortified village does not come in tapped because it specifically says forest or plains next to land on Canopy Vista. So it's great. Fortified village and Canopy Vista work very well together. Um, that's eight. Then we also have Blighted Steep. We put this in, I put this in specifically because of the life gain. You can spend four, tap it, sacrifice Blighted Steep. You gain two life for each creature you control. Just another way to try to get to that 40 life total so that you can win the game. So that's 12 of our lands. And then we have six plains and six forests to get us up to the 24. So that's the deck itself. Now let's talk about the sideboard. There's a lot of choices. As always, the sideboard depends on what decks you know you're going to be going against. Hopefully you have some idea with your play group, right? Maybe there's somebody that always plays their vehicle deck. You know you're going to need something to take care of vehicles. So I'm going to go over some options for sideboard just so you're aware of them. Number one is Watchers of the Dead. I love it because it's a cat card. I was trying to get it into the actual deck, but it, the others just sort of outweighed it, in my opinion. Um, it is great. Um, graveyard hate. So if someone is playing a Scrap Heap Scrounger, you can use Watcher of the Dead to try to mess with that player. Now, it is not perfect graveyard hate okay they get to keep two cards and they get to pick which two cards they keep but if they've got three scrap heap scroungers in their graveyard and you play this then you know they got to choose what are they going to exile to get the scrap heap back um yeah it, it can mess with people it's better if they have more in their graveyard rather than less when you choose to use it but if you're going up against a lot of graveyard stuff a lot of um, zombies uh, mummies you know that kind of stuff or scrap heap scroungers uh, watch uh, watchers of the dead can work and like i said it's colorless which means it provides graveyard hate for a lot of decks that don't normally have it so that's nice um, heroic intervention uh, is great against cards with a lot uh, decks with a lot of removal. If somebody keeps discarding your, um, sending your champions to the graveyard, then you can use that to save them for a turn, which is excellent. Appetite for the unnatural, great for getting rid of an artifact. I chose Appetite of the Unnatural specifically because it gets rid of an artifact or an enchantment. 
And enchantments will be a thing because of Amonkhet. There are lots of great enchantments that you are probably going to want to try to get rid of. So I felt that Appetite uh, for the Unnatural was the best way to go in the sideboard. Because you only get 15 cards in your sideboard, of course. So if you're worried about artifacts or if you're worried about enchantments, this is a great way to go. Fumigate is another great choice. That'll just get rid of a bunch of guys. A bunch of little guys. Uh, it can hurt your guys, of course. But if you are running Heroic Intervention, then the Fumigate will not let your guys die, even though their guys die. Um, quarantine Field, that's a great choice. So Cast Out is popular because it costs four and you can get rid of one thing. Quarantine Field costs four to get rid of one thing or six to get rid of two or eight to get rid of three or ten to get rid of four. You, you get to choose. You can do more than just exile one thing. And I keep saying thing because it's uh, a non-land permanent you can get rid of almost anything with it, which is excellent. So I choose Quarantine Field over Cast Out. Yeah, so that's good sideboard options. Of course, you, you're going to know if you're up against something that I haven't mentioned here. You're going to know if you need to try to find a way to get around that. But I hope you guys enjoy this deck. It is super fun to play. It's excellent. It turned out so much better than I thought it was going to. And winning with these alternate win conditions is very fun and very crazy. Uh, so enjoy it. Have a great night. And thank you guys for watching. If you uh, liked the video, please hit the like button. And do please subscribe.